could be different here in the Tennessee Valley than right across state lines in Georgia. Close to 100 Tyner seniors just walked out of school. Prepararse tiene sentido, esté listo ahora, meaning getting prepared makes sense. Be ready now. The owner of this home and this property says it all happened in a blink of an eye. See how far this roof slid from the back of the house. What I'm stepping over right now is actually a tree that was knocked over during those Easter tornadoes. We're anonymously mailed this internal audit from the city. That facilities report that came out describing the conditions at Tyner Academy rated the school a 16 out of 100 on a ground score. It was a beautiful first snowfall here in Dade County. Take a look. It looks like it's straight out of Narnia. The airport already approved an expansion that could add more flight options for passengers looking to get a flight out of Chattanooga. Now that expansion would make a number of changes to the space behind the security checkpoint here. The Supreme Court is taking up a case on the minds of many people nationwide. Can companies require you to get the COVID-19 vaccine or get tested every week? Speriamo che ci possiamo vedere a presto. Holes in the ceiling, crumbling brick on the exterior, and constant leaks in classrooms. As you can see, the water is now leaking onto the table. These are the conditions Tyner students say they're tired of. It has gotten so bad to the point where mold and rust is now developing in our classrooms. Students organizing this walkout today. A view from our News Channel 9 Skyview shows close to 100 students leaving Tyner Academy around noon. They demanded a fixed construction start date from elected leaders for the new school they were promised long ago. We can't keep being led on and led on and led on and led on and led on for years and years and years now when all the rest of the schools that were on the plan with us are now fixed. A facilities review of all Hamilton County schools found conditions at Tyner were so poor it couldn't be repaired, giving the school a ground score of 16 and a building score of 57 out of 100. I mean, we ask the kids to wear polos and to dress a certain way and act a certain way at a school and to be professional, and then we have them come to this building that's literally falling apart. That facilities review did ultimately recommend demolishing this school and finding students at Tyner Academy a new space. That we need a stable classroom for each and every one of us. Parents and alumni also supporting the walkout, saying the time for a new building is right now. In the months since this fire, Marky Beasley has slowly been rebuilding. Over the last few weeks since this happened, we went out and bought new furniture, um, appliances and everything. But the concern for Beasley is not the material. This place needs to be updated, you know, just to prevent a life from being taken in the future. He says he's worried about this happening again. Just two weeks ago, we brought his concerns to the assistant fire marshal and filed a public record request. It's been a minute. We learned the complex had not been inspected since 2004. Since there has been uh, no inspection, I guarantee you there will be one coming up for Soon. This record we just received shows on the 14th CFD did inspect the complex. They found that in most buildings, smoke alarms were not operational, and both the fire alarm system and maintenance of exit ways were rated unsatisfactory. Wow. That's kind of upsetting, to be honest. Since then, the fire department has reinspected the complex and found little progress, saying in their second report, quote, if significant progress had not been made by October 1st, the office would start removing residents from what they call an unsafe situation. Shouldn't have a fire, four or five fires break out in order for that to become, you know, urgent. We call the property managers to check in on that progress. Hi, this is Sabrina with News Channel 9. Is this Miss Tamara? She told us all smoke detectors and emergency lights were repaired in units where residents are living. But when we went inside multiple residents' homes, we found this. This smoke alarm dangling from the ceiling in another unit, this one with cobwebs, but new emergency lights installed. And inside of this apartment, no smoke detector in place at all. It's the oldest family-owned restaurant. Location hasn't changed and the doors have never closed in the state of Tennessee. Inside this restaurant, more than 100 years of history. This is naturalization papers. It began when this man, Charles Zarzar, left his home country of Lebanon back in 1915. 18th day of January, 1918. Isn't that cool? For $1,000 in 1918, Charles purchased land and started a restaurant that would endure past his lifetime. Isn't that wonderful? But tragedy 
tarnish the milestone purchase for the young immigrant family when Charles's wife, Nazira, caught and died of the Spanish flu that same year. My husband's great aunt remembers the day she died. She's passed now, but she was 13 and she remembered running down the street crying when she found out her mother died of the Spanish flu. She would reflect back on, on the, the fact that everybody was sick and nobody knew what to do about it. It's a story that echoed in Dixie Fuller's mind at the start of COVID-19, nearly 100 years after his great-grandmother's death. Uh, but, but seeing it come full circle and happen again, you know, I, I was I never thought it was not serious thing in both 1918 and again. Now the restaurant adapting to meet the needs of the moment. Pudding, you got switching to a delivery model throughout COVID-19 and now once again seating customers. Two banana puddings coming up with a fully vaccinated staff. Now a sense of relief. I think we're rebounding now. I think we're on the good side of this thing and an owner eager to continue serving loyal customers. Going back to the land of the banana pudding at the same place where his ancestors did the same thing more than 100 years ago. Reporting in Chattanooga, I'm Sabrina Majore, News Channel 9.